Hi everyone, welcome to part one of the tutorial on Chaplin in New Shoes. This song is a combination of the holy trinity of fingerstyle guitar. The tune was written by Jerry Reed, recorded first by Chet Atkins in a full band version and later performed live by Tommy Emanuel in a solo version. But there is no reason for panic. Despite the involvement of all three master guitarists, this tune can be viewed as one of the easier fingerstyle tunes to get started with. If you are looking for the tablature or notation file, then click the music notes link down below. The full tutorial is made up out of two parts. The first part, this one, covering the verse, will be released on YouTube for free. For full access to all my tutorials and loads of extra help, you can check out my Patreon page. I hope this is a song that beginning fingerstyle guitar players can increase their skill with. The verse covered in this first part is mainly made up of open chords and adding in the melody is mainly done by adding or removing one finger on top of the chord shape. The rhythm isn't too demanding either and the only real trick you are presented with is an unorthodox but necessary twist in the left hand requiring you to use the index finger under the middle finger but you'll see what i mean once you get there now then let's get you started okay so let's get to work guitar is in standard tuning capo on the second fret and all you need is a thumb pick the capo on the second fret is optional Tommy uses one to match uh, Chet's key of the original version, uh, but it does make life a little bit easier. The capo on the second fret will relieve some tension of your fretting hand, especially in the sections where you have to play bar chords. So if you want to make life as easy as possible when starting out with this song, do go for that capo on the second fret. I'm going to go play through the whole verse just one time now, but I want to address one thing. You'll see a few sections where I'm not using the pinky at all. Don't change the fingerings in this first section to include the pinky where you think it will be easier in that way, because you will need the pinky extensively in the second part of the verse, or in the second verse at least. Um, if you use the fingerings and, and, and the, the chord voicings like I'm going to explain to you in just a second, then all you have to do in the second verse is just add in the pinky in certain parts. If you go ahead and change the fingerings or the voicings or the way you play certain chords, then you will need to change it all back once you start playing the second verse. Just a word of warning. So here we go, one time, all the way through the verse, just a little bit below concert speed, so you can get the first good look. second verse so lots of open chords tricky section around that F chord but uh, we'll get to that in a second you're starting out with a C major chord and you will be alternating on two sides between a C chord and a C major seventh chord so without the index finger on the B string and you will be alternating on the bass line between the third fret on the low A string and the third fret on the low E string. And it sort of moves at the same time with the index finger jumping up and down on uh, the B string as well. First things first, you start out with just an open G string and the second fret on the G string using the middle finger. So that's the lead in for the melody. The pickup bar is just and then you end up straight away on that C major 7th voicing, so no index finger for the very first chord, and you just pluck with the thumb pick the A string, 3rd fret, together with the open B string. Then you move the thumb pick to the D string and you put down the index finger on the 1st fret on the B string, giving you just a full-on C chord. So, one, two. As you go for the D string with the thumb pick, you add in the index finger and you pluck at the same time. Next note, the thumb pick switches together with the ring finger to the 3rd fret on the low E string, so in ring finger 3rd fret, 
to the low E string, thumb pick follows along to the low E string, and you remove the index finger again. Again, index finger just moves, and then you do the exact same thing as before, you drop down the index finger again, and head with the thumb pick to the D string. So, one, two, three, four. As you see, the ring finger sort of pops up straight away again to alternate back to the A string. Those, that first bar. Th one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back, first beat of the next bar is just again A string with a thumb pick together with the open B string. Just a, f a quicker follow up than we had up until this point. So you head back, second bar, A string together with the open B string. Then again, dropping down the index finger on the B string, first fret, while heading with the thumb pick to the D string. And then you follow that up with an open G string in between that bass note and the next bass note on the low E string. Three, four. Together, A string and B string, D string and B string, open G string, and again alternating with the ring finger to the low E string, third fret, thumb pick follows along. Let's connect that to that first bar, it's going to make a little bit more sense like that. Tommy then does something that I haven't seen too many other people do. As he heads down, as you play that ring finger on the third fret, Tommy is going to add in the index finger on the second fret on the G string. So that means behind the middle finger, who is still pressing down on the D string. So right behind that middle finger. This means that it's probably necessary sort of to turn your hand just a little bit in order to make the necessary room for that index finger to be dropped down below the middle finger. And again, that melody note, that second fret on the G string is played in between two bass notes. So, together, together, separately, separately, and back, sorry, back to the next melody note. So that one bar just by itself. One more time. And this little variation, this, uh, at the same time with the index finger landing behind the middle finger, as well as that variation with the melody notes in between the bass lines, you're going to have to play that a lot during this song. Let's have a look at those first two bars. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but based around an E minor chord. You just drop down to an E minor voicing, middle finger, ring finger, both on the second fret, on the A string and the D string. Again, if you watch Tommy Emmanuel play this, he will fret these two notes by just using the middle finger, giving him an extra finger to spare to play the melody around it, but it is perfectly possible to play it with just a standard E minor voicing as well. I'm still not capable of playing those, those two strings at the same time. It's possible like this. So now, right now I'm fretting with that one finger, with the middle finger, the second fret on both the A and the D string, but I still cannot do it while playing through a song. So I'm just going for the E minor chord shape. The line on that E minor chord is almost the same thing as in the first bar, but now you're actually getting it a little bit easier in the left hand because you won't have to be alternating between those two strings. Just press down on the E minor chord, open B string, open low E string. Again, as you head to the D string with the thumb pick, you drop down the index finger on the first fret, thumb pick to the A string and again to an open B string. 
playing two eighth notes, so one melody note together with the A string and the other one right behind that before rounding it out with one last separate bass note. That's that third bar. And then you finish that off by just strumming through a full open E minor chord. And Tommy sort of, and Tommy as well as Chet can sort of take the tempo just a little bit back there, a little bit of a pause and before you continue again. You continue again with the same melody note you played in the beginning of the bar, just an open G string and then a second fret on the G string. Let's have a look at those first four bars. The fifth bar is the exact same thing as you played in the first bar around the C chord, alternating between the A string and the E string and lifting up back and forth with the index finger. Tommy plays a little fill. Tommy Emanuel, when he plays the, the live version of the song, he adds a little fill. Again, he's going to use that index finger landing behind the middle finger. So the index finger still stays on the second fret on the D string. And Tommy will drop down the index finger right behind that middle finger. But he will do it by playing a hammer on this time. So not just plucking that uh, string separately, but adding it in as a left hand technique. This is what it sounds like. And it's the rest of the melody is the exact same thing. We play that same open string in the first uh, few bars of, of uh, the verse already, but now that G string is ringing open. You're coming down from the D string and as you play that G string and as you hammer on to the second fret, you have to time that out exactly right so the hammer on lands at the same time as you play the low G bass note. Really slowly. So bass note on the D string, open G string and as you hammer on at the same time playing the bass note on the low E string. If you want to practice this separately, then just do it like this. You start on the C chord, just C, E, adding in the hammer on. Just lift out that one technique, dropping down the index finger behind the middle finger will feel a bit strange at first, but by lifting the technique out in this way, you will be able to make it click in your fingers before long. So just bass line, A string, D string, E string, D string, so A string, D, E string, D, and now As you hammer on the low G bass note at the exact same time. Once that clicks, this is the melody you get. Again, in between those two bass notes, you land with a hammer on on the G string and you play an open B string before going to the bass note on the D string. you get that, you move to an A dominant 7th chord. Open A string, index finger 2nd fret on the D string, open G string, middle finger 2nd fret on the B string, and an open E string on top. We know that melody, we know that variation already. Now you are adding in, starting from the 2nd fret on the B string, and you are adding in the ring finger on the 3rd fret. Picking pattern is the exact same thing starting on the A string and the B string at the same time, dropping down the ring finger as you head with the thumb pick to the D string. Dropping down to the low E string, again removing the ring finger. And again those two eighth notes like we played in the previous bar. And again that 
large strum just dragging out the strum of the plectrum just a little bit, not the one straight strum down, but just give it a little bit of room before continuing into the next part. And then we will continue by playing the A string on, uh, sorry, the uh, second fret, which would be an A without the capo. So second fret on the G string to an open B string. That is going to lead us into the next section with the F chord. Now, before we get to that, first I'm going to play those last four bars one more time. To the F chord. Before we head into the next section, let me play those first eight bars all the way through. This is the opening section of the melody. Then we head into an F chord. Now, this is uh, a part where you'll have to make a few choices. Uh, I had to do so as well. Tommy heads for an F chord using the thumb over the side of the neck. So thumb on the first fret on the low E string. Then a little bar across the first two strings, the E string and the B string on the first fret. Middle finger second fret on the G string. Ring finger third fret on the D string. What is the choice you have to make again in this section? Tommy plays the A string and the D string with just one finger, allowing him to play a three, a three string bass part underneath. Um, and again, if you struggle like I still do with playing those two strings with just one finger, this is going to be a little bit more complicated. You can't just use all four fingers because you need the pinky to play the melody. So there are two options. If the thumb over the side of the neck feels difficult to you, there is only one option and that is heading for a bar chord and just playing a two string bass pattern just across the low E string and the D string. If you are comfortable with using the thumb over the side of the neck, you can use the ring finger again to alternate between the D string and the A string. First, I'm going to have a quick look at how it works with the thumb over the side of the neck. If you decide not to go for that, then I will address the method with the bar in just a few minutes. So I'll make sure to add a little chapter so you can skip to that. First, with the thumb over the side of the neck, this is the melody. just those those two F chords starting on an F major heading for an F minor so this is how it works with the thumb thumb over the side of the neck you come out of that pick a beat with the melody and the very first chord you will try and pluck the thumb pick along with two fingers on the G string and the uh, B string giving you that F major sound this is going to be particularly important with the next chord when you switch to that F minor sound so you start out with the thumb pick on the low E string middle finger and index finger on the G and B string as you move the thumb pick to the D string you drop down the pinky on the third fret and now we're back to just plucking the bass notes and the melody notes, so just two strings. As you remove the pinky to head back to the first fret, you alternate with the ring finger to the A string. And that one has to move quickly, that last melody note. just switched with the ring finger to the A string and for the next bass note you have to switch back to the D string right away while dropping the pinky again on the third fret. Really slowly. So that alternating between two strings at the end is rather quick. So one, two, alternate, alternate. Full bar. That's already the first part of the next bar. You stay in the exact same fingering and the thumb pick keeps playing the exact same thing.
again in between the bass notes, that A string, and you alternate back to the A string with the ring finger. And now you'll add the pinky on the D string as well. So you can just finish the bass line without any more alternating to do. Open, so you start out with that A string to the, uh, sorry, you start out with that A note on the G string, second fret, to the A bass note, open B string to the bass note on the D string. That's the second bar of that uh, part in the F major chord. Three, four, to the F minor voicing and I'm just going to stop there and head back really quickly for the part with uh, the bar chord because the F minor part is actually the same whatever option you use for that uh, very first chord. So now onto the part with the bar chord. We're going to stick to a two string bass pattern, just the low E string and the D string and we're going to put the melody on top. A bar make sure you don't play the A string in a full F bar. You should be playing this. We're not using the note on the A string because we need the pinky for the melody. As you go for the bass note on the D string, you drop down the pinky on the third fret of the B string. As you go for the bass note on the D string, you drop down the pinky on the third fret of the B string. times the exact same thing. Even three times and then quickly heading for the second fret on the G string. And then you have to lift up the bar to get an open B string in between there. One more time. The end part is just 2nd fret on the G string to the low E bass note, open B string to the bass note on the D string. It is actually possible in this section as well to use the same alternating movement between those two strings as we discussed on uh, the, the, the voicing with the thumb over the side of the neck, but it, it might be a bit trickier because you have to focus on holding down that full bar chord. But this is the full section using only two strings. Maybe a bit slower, sorry. Then, we're in whatever option you used, you move to an F minor chord. You have to play this a little bit differently than what you would normally do, using a bar on the second fret across all six strings and using the middle finger and the ring finger on the third fret on the A string and the D string. Normally, a minor chord would be something like this. Now, again, we need the pinky for the melody on top here, so there is no other option than to play this with a full bar using the middle finger and ring finger to play the lower part of the chord. This is what it sounds like. Let's connect that to the F, card, uh, the F major chord straight away. chord so what is happening on that F minor chord is you're playing again on the first beat two strings with the index finger and middle finger on the G string and B string to make sure you really get that different sound between that first F major chord and the F minor chord in the second part so so really making sure you get that that minor sound it's harder on the left hand but it, it's really an essential uh, part of the song to get that shift from major to minor. Then again most of the rest of the melody is going to be the same thing. Every time you head to the D string you're going to drop down the pinky on the third fret. And this time since you're holding down that uh, bar shape with 
the three bass notes, you can't play a three uh, string bass pattern without having to alternate too much in the left hand. We played that same melody already in the beginning of the song, so instead of just playing each melody note on each bass note, you will now play the first two on the bass note, on the bass note, on the bass note, three times on the bass note, and then after that third bass note, you're going to add in the pinky just a little bit quicker to get the melody notes in between the bass notes. So that last part is A string, third fret together with the bar on the B string, melody note, bass note, melody note, removing the pinky again, and back to the low E bass note. That's the last part. Let's play that full bar. And then for the next bar, the second bar, while remaining on that F minor chord, we're going to play each and every melody note in between the bass notes. So nothing together with the bass note, every time bass note, melody note, bass note, melody note. Together with that first bar. last melody note is already for something for the next chord. So that second bar on that F minor chord is one, two, three, four, one. So first beat bass note, second beat bass note, then a separate melody note, third fret with a pinky. One, two, three, one, two, three. After that melody note on the third fret, we are going to remove the pinky and head back to the first fret on the B string. One, two, three. As we move the bass part to the A string, we're removing the pinky, playing the first fret again. One, two, three. between each bass note. Then after that final bass note on the F uh, note third fret on the D string, we're going for the pinky on the third fret on the high E string. And sometimes Tommy likes to add in the open B string as well as we're heading back into an E minor chord. This is what it sounds like. Three, four. right in front of the beat. So in between the fourth beat and the first beat of the next bar, you play that double stop or that single string on top. Those two bars of that F minor chord back to back. Three, four. Now those four bars of that F chord back to back, this is the hardest section I think even of the entire song, if you get that F chord down, you're good to go. So the full F chord section, one, two. Next four bars. see the, four, the first and the third bar are the exact same thing. So you're landing into that bar by using that uh, melody note, third fret on the high E string, open B string, bound across the bar, three, four, and just leaving that ringing out and then bass note on the low E string, bass note on the D string. As you head to the bass note on the A string, Switch the pinky over to the B string, third fret as well, for the next melody note. Just together with the bass note on the A string and then straight to the open E string. To the bass note on the D string and then just switching over this entire voicing 
one string down, so from the E minor chord, to an A sus voicing, uh, which you need for the next melody note on the G string, second fret. Heading to an A bass string, bass note on the D string, while holding down the A voicing, and then as you move to the low E bass string, removing the middle finger for an open G string. together with the bass note and the eighth note right after that back adding in the middle finger to the second fret on the G string. Bass note on the D string and back to that same third fret open B string melody we used before to head into the E minor chord. Three, four, That was all the exact same thing, so the second time around that E minor chord is the exact same thing as the first time. Again, you will be moving down to the G string, but this time not the entire voicing, just the middle finger to the second fret on the G string, and you will now add in the ring finger third fret on the low E string and the pinky third fret on the D string, giving you a G dominant ninth sound. This is how it sounds if you add it in with the, the previous bars. Three, four. So the last part is basically just um, almost an arpeggio. You switch down to that second fret. Third fret on the low E string, third fret on the D string, removing the middle finger for an open G string and putting it straight back. One, two, three, four. That's the final bar. One, two, three, four. Let's add that in with that previous E minor bar. Three, four. And those last two notes are again the same uh, leading into the melody as we played in the beginning and this will lead us into the second verse. Let me play those last four bars all the way through. Three, four. And then it's straight into the second verse with one tiny but brilliant variation the good news is you can basically play the second verse. Um, it's all the same fingerings, there's just one thing that changes which, which adds this, this lovely variation in, uh, in comparison to the first verse. But first, let's close this down. Let me play through those last eight bars one more time and then I'm going to complete this section of the tutorial by playing through the full verse one time really, really slowly. Here we go. into the second verse. That was the full verse. Let me play through the entire thing one more time, then I'm going to conclude this part of the tutorial. The variation and the bridge will be something for the second part. Here we go, full through the bridge, really slowly to give you one last look. Into the next verse. 
get some time to get this into your fingers and I'll be back next time with the explanation on the variation in the verse as well as everything you need to know on the bridge. See you there. Bye bye.